well, you know, all my cars are girls. I don't care if he builds them or if the kids build them. And the reason why is because they're temperamental. You've got to talk <laughs> to them. You've got to just say, come on, baby, let's just get me down the track. Um, what we're going to do is, is we're going to make some just first cautious test laps. It's what we do with every single car when we put them out into service. We'll make a first few engine only runs, not letting the afterburner, making sure that she's going to handle properly. And then once we do that, we hit her full afterburner and we let her go. What's this, her name? Her name is Eagle Fury, baby. She oh. is she is proud. This is a beautiful car. Beautiful. Well, we can't wait to see it. Um, tell me what uh, you get to do as far as mentoring with both the women and the young men. You know, um, it's so important, too, because there's a lot of young ladies that are interested in the Jet Dragster project. And for them to see that us girls could go out there and kick it just with the guys, that's just as impressive. And they're not there just sitting here just, you know, handing the tools to the boys. They're getting in there. They're getting greasy. They're getting dirty. They're, you know, pulling the blades. They're, they're doing the welding. They're mocking it up. They're doing everything. And, you know, when I was little, obviously a Mennonite, I didn't have those opportunities. And it all came because of Chris. Uh, I think he had an ultimate plan, though, because now if my car needs something or my dishwasher needs something, my car always wins. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me a little bit about um, your son. He's grown up in racing. What is he doing now? Um, he's 16. When he was a little guy, uh, because I drove, Chris used to put him in a papoose in the front and used to have me go out on the starting line doing burnouts. His name was Spark Plug because we drove piston engine cars. <laughs> and as he grew up, we tried to get Igniter to hit and it didn't work so much. But um, he turned 16 and in 2014, my son is going to be my crew chief. And, and I'm so excited. And what is his real name and, and nickname? His name is Andrew Larson. No nickname because I'm mom and I'm so weird and I couldn't <laughs> give him a nickname. You know? <laughs> well, thank you so much. This being a Dr. Biodiesel documentary, uh, we're going to uh, be sponsoring a senior project here at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and they're going to actually build a biodiesel reactor and I know that that is of some interest to you Chris. Yeah you know biodiesel is a is a fascinating uh, you know, and all the renewable energy stuff is, is a fascinating area of our industry and one of the unique things about turbine engines, particularly, you know, these are kind of some old relic engines that we use. Some of these things are, what, 50, 60 years yeah. old occasionally. <laughs> so, and the great thing about those is the simplicity, simplicity that comes along with that design. I always joke with people and say, you know, we could put, we could burn bean burritos in these things if you could <laughs> ram them through the fuel lines. And, but there's a little bit of truth to that because we have done biodiesel testing in the past. Wonderful. And we, and we have a car that was actually a Daytona-based car, but we did a lot of biodiesel testing with that. And one of my backgrounds is a little bit of engineering physics. Uh, I'm a pilot too, but really my passion is getting my hands dirty and getting working with the tools and so on. So, so um, I, the biodiesel project is a really fun project for us. We have students involved there. It's really exciting to hear that they're gonna work with you here in, Pre in Prescott, Arizona. Hopefully we can ma maybe merge some of those efforts at some point. And really, I think that just as important as making a difference to the world in, in green energy is really um, uh, being able to make sure that these fuels that we develop are actually a legitimate alternative to some, of the, uh, to some of the fossil fuels that we have that we know today so well. It's not that fossil fuels gonna go away, don't get me wrong, but if you can supplement in certain areas, we've run up to 20% biodiesel. So a B20. A B20, and which doesn't sound like that much, but it's quite a bit when you talk about one fifth of a gallon of fuel. Now this car's gonna burn a gallon and a half to two gallons of fuel a second. And Ooh. there's a ton of people, as we all know, that have done a lot of piston engine research, but with ethanol and then with, with biodiesel and, and piston engines and trucks and buses and so on. But not a lot of people have done fuels research with turbine engines. There's a few of them, but not as many as the others. So I think we have a nice opportunity to take this platform and do some things that, that let's be honest, uh, we can, we can this, this platform, we can do things with that the FAA would never allow you to do with uh, up in the air. And it's still that same technology 
so far we're in pretty good shape. We know the tune-up of what the car's like with that B20 biodiesel ratio. We know the tune-up and how to tune them against things like the, how fast the flame front moves as, you, as, you, as, you, as that flame burns compared to fossil fuels, flame propagation we're, we're, okay. we're talking about. Also, there's some conditions with turbine engines that are very unique to turbine engines. There's one especially, since this is an engine that's literally removed right out of a fighter jet, um, we have an afterburner, and it's an interesting device, but essentially what it does is it takes the exhaust off the main engine. About 70% of that exhaust has usable oxygen left in it, so we can reintroduce another area of fuel and reburn that area and that's we call that's that energy afterburn. efficiency absolutely that's energy e efficiency the fuel flow is very high but considering the power that it makes and we almost tune that like an oxy acetylene torch so we're tuning the flame in that afterburner but there's another condition called cyclic vibration the slang for that is called screech that has to do with flame propagation it has to do with finding the perfect fuel mixture and that's a little bit more difficult than what we I understand one of the goals of the senior project is not only to uh, do the transesterification with the biodiesel reactor for bike to create biodiesel out of waste animal vegetable oil, but also to take it to another level and create jet fuel. Absolutely. There's a number of different organizations that are looking at option, op alternatives for jet fuel. We've already seen in other countries where by law there has to be a certain percentage of, uh, of green fuel mixed or blended with the regular fossil fuels. So this is a great opportunity for us. The aerospace industry uses a huge volume of, volume of fuel. Yes. Now, nothing like we see on the roads every day, but as airliners fly over, the fuel consumption is very high. They're very efficient nowadays anyway, sure. but the fuel consumption is real high. So if we can supplement even a small percentage of that fuel with a biofuel, the impact is staggering. It really is. Yeah. And, it, and it's almost... Uh, uh, it's almost like compound interest. If you start, <laughs> that's the most, what did Einstein, does that any, did Einstein, somebody asked him one time, does anything amaze you? He says, compound interest is amazing. <laughs> but wait till you see what we can do when you add just two or three percent of a green fuel to the fossil fuels that we have today. And it has, what we're seeing so far is a massive effect on some of the emissions that really? come off these engines, piston engines as well as turbine engines.